All right, we're gonna complete our second set of notes for the school year, and today we're gonna continue our conversation about functions. So, I have someone with me who is gonna go through this video with us. Remind me, what's a function? So, a function is, it's a set of instructions uh, that has a name, and you can call a function in order to run the instructions that are uh, inside it. Okay, so if I heard you correctly, a function is just a set of instructions that we give a name. And we can essentially call that function to use it, yes. to execute those instructions. Yeah. That has a name. And we call it to use it. Cool. Now, I want you to think about the functions that we have called so far. We've seen ellipse, we've seen rect, you've also done some stuff with the triangle function, and that's all really great when you want to draw something with those basic shapes. But what happens if you need to do something and there isn't a function for it yet. What do you think we can do? Can we make a new function? We can make our own function, yeah. And that is exactly what we're talking about today because we're gonna be focusing on defining functions. Right, so sometimes we have tools that have already been built and we can call those functions and our life is very easy. Other times we need a function that we build ourselves for a specific need. And when we want to make our own function, we have to define that function. So let's jump over to pop code. And you'll notice that we have some code here. These, these are functions that are being defined. What do you notice is happening in both of these functions, these definitions? Well, we have the word function. Um, they both have curly braces. Uh, one of them has stuff inside the curly braces. So that's probably, are those the instructions inside that function? Yeah, exactly. So just like we saw with calling functions, we know that we give our function a name. Okay, so set up's the name. Yeah. And then and you've got parentheses after it. Yeah. And that inside of these curly braces, we have our instructions, which happen to be, in this case, calls to other functions. Okay. okay. So when we're using pop code and we're drawing stuff, these two functions have to be defined. Whenever you're doing something with pop code and drawing, you always have to define these two functions. And the way that we define these two functions is by starting with the keyword function, then a space, followed by a name. Okay, in this case, the name of this function is setup. Does what? that mean my name can't have spaces in it? Correct. The okay. name cannot have spaces in it. Your computer freaks out when it sees spaces. Except for this space, when we're defining functions, it expects that. Okay. okay. What's the name of the function being defined on line five? Oh, draw. Draw. That's right. It comes after the keyword function and the space. Cool. After our name, we always need a set of parentheses followed by curly braces. Okay. So let us finish the definition of draw. Let's say we wanted to draw a rectangle. Can you remind me, how do I draw a rectangle? So to draw a rectangle, I need to call the rect function, right? Yep. Okay. And I remember that functions have inputs, and then inputs tell the function sort of how to behave? Yeah. Okay. So. I know that I start to call a function by typing the name of the function, and then I remember I need uh, parentheses, open and close, and then I always end everything with a semicolon. Awesome. And then inside the parentheses, I have to put the inputs, right? Correct. Okay. But I don't remember what the inputs to rect are. Can you remind me? Yes. Wait. Yes. Before you do that, I'm going to write this as a comment so I can remember this later. Oh, beautiful. You remember that we need to use comments. Yes. These seem really helpful. They are really helpful. Always use comments. Always. Okay. So the first input value for rect is your x-coordinate or how left or right it is on our screen. 
Nice. The second input is y, or your y coordinate. This determines how high or low it is on the screen. Okay. The next one is width, so how wide it is. And then finally, we end with height, so how tall it is. Okay. And then these are all numbers, right? Correct. Okay. So I was going to pick 10, 10, uh, 20, and 30. Nice. Oh, cool. Rectangle showed up. So in this case, you actually finish our draw function definition by including a line of instructions. In this case, it happens to be a call to a function we've used before. Correct. Nice. So based off of this, what information do you think we need in order to define a function? I guess you need your name and you need instructions. Yeah. And what do those instructions tend to be about? Well, they're all function calls right now. Yeah, that's correct. And they often have something to do with what we're trying to accomplish, right? In this example where I said, hey, when we finish the definition for draw, the goal is to draw a rectangle. So you wrote a line of code that draws a rectangle. That's all of this function needed to accomplish that test of drawing a rectangle. So in these cases, you want to think about instructions that help you do something that you're trying to accomplish. Um, the last thing that is really important to include is the keyword function. Keyword function. And this is just a cue we give our computer, right, at the very font that says, hey, I'm about to define a function. So a keyword is just a word that the programming language knows? Yes, correct. Okay. So a keyword is a very special word that's reserved for helping your computer understand what you're trying to do. Does that mean I can't use the word function for any other reason? Correct. So the function, the word function in this case is reserved for defining functions. Okay. All right. All right, good to remember. So let's take a look at this. We want to define a function that draws a black square in the middle of a 400 by 400 canvas. So here we actually already have a 400 by 400 canvas. That's what the setup function is doing. All right. All right. I want you to define your own function that draws a black square in the middle of this 400 by 400 canvas. Okay. Uh, so. I right, gotta start with the keyword. Start yes. with the keyword function. And then I need my name. I'm gonna call it probably just what it does. I'm gonna call it draw black square. Nice. And you remember that you can't have any spaces in the name. Yes. I love it. Uh, and then I need parentheses. I don't know what those are for yet, but I'm gonna use uh, the other ones have it. And then I need my two curly braces. And then uh, I make some space in the middle. Uh, and now I guess I would draw. Now I need to call functions that draw the black square. Correct. So I'm going to use rect. Uh, it needs to go in the middle. Um, so I'll just start, you know, by uh, put x and y because that's the middle of 400, and then a square. So the width and the height need to be the same. Uh, so I'll just do that. Uh, but nothing showed up. Oh, I haven't. I didn't call the function. Correct. Okay. So you actually noticed something that was really important. When you define your functions, it's like teaching your computer a new trick. But your computer won't actually do that new trick until you ask it. It's like teaching your dog how to sit, but never saying, hey, Rufus, sit, right? In that case, calling is like asking your computer to do it. So now when you think about building your own functions, there's two steps, defining and then calling the function. Okay, oh, I need a semicolon. And so that worked. So there's nothing inside of the parentheses when I call this, because there's nothing in the parentheses there. Right. Okay, so I drew this in the center. It's not quite in the center, is that okay? That's okay, I'll, okay. I'll accept that. I guess it would have to be 195, 195. <laughs> Still a little off center. Right, yeah, when you're calling the rect function, the x and y coordinate is actually the upper left hand corner. So you have to account for the width. Mm -hmm. In this case, your width is 10 and your height is 10. So, cool. Is this a black square? It's not. 
I need to do more. Is there like a fill function? Yes, there is. There is a fill function that you can use to make your shapes a solid color. Okay, so I call that after rect or before rect? What do you think? I think I would call it before so that everything after it gets colored. Why don't we try it? Okay. What are the arguments for fill? I'm going to put this in another comment in the comments. Fill takes three input values. And those values are how much red, how much green, and how much blue is in the color that you would like. And then these are all numbers, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, so let's try fill, and then black, I think is no green, no red, and no blue. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay. Cool. So, you successfully defined a function that draws a black square approximately in the middle of our 400 by 400 screen. Let's make sure we write that down so that we don't forget. So again, you always want to start with that keyword function, then a space, and then the name you come up with. That name should always point to what your function is supposed to do. You chose a beautiful name, you chose draw black square. I'm going to just put an S there because I'm running out of room. And then you had your curly braces. You had some com oops. You had some comments in there that remind you of what the fill function does. So that when you call it, you know exactly what you are doing. And then you actually called the rect function to draw that rectangle. Let's see, remind me what your numbers were. 195, 195, and 10. Beautiful. 10, then, nice. You forgot a 195. Oh. Thank you. I should have got that earlier this so time. I yeah. wait until you finish the function. Okay. All right, let's work on this last question. So we want to define another function that draws a bullseye. All right, we can assume that the center of the bullseye is found at 100, 100, and that we should include comments. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit so that we know what we're looking at. So, what is a bullseye? It's like a target, right? It's got sort of a bunch of circles. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we're making a bunch of circles that are all centered at the same point, but they get bigger and bigger. Correct. Okay. Nice. So, I guess let's make that a function. Uh, function, uh, I'm going to call it draw bullseye, because that's what it's going to do. Need my parentheses. I need my curly braces, and then all the instructions go in the middle. Um, and so I've got a circle function, right? Uh, circle inputs. What are the arguments for the circle function? They're the same for rect, so we have our x, y, width, height. Width and height. Okay. Now, this function has a weird name. It's not circle. It's the more generic term, which is ellipse. You're right. Okay. I remember now. Okay. So... Let's draw the, I'm going to just call ellipse just so I make sure that it's working. Uh, I have to center everything at 100, 100, because that's what you said in the instructions. And then we'll start uh, with a small one that has the same width and height uh, because it's a circle. And that's not showing up because I haven't told the computer to call my function yet. Okay, so now I've got a circle. And now, so if I call it again, but with a bigger width and height, but the same x and y. Hmm, what do you notice? It erased the first one. Why do you think that's happening? It's probably, 
probably didn't undo the first one. It probably just drew on top. So if I delete that and then put it next, that way I draw the bigger one first and draw the small one on top of it. Okay, that fixed it. Nice. So I guess I can call another one. Like that. And then I guess I could leave a little comment. Draw from biggest to smallest, just so I can remember. Beautiful. I love your use of comments. It's always great to include them if you need to remember something for later. And I also love that you picked up on the fact that order matters when you're drawing here. When our computer is reading our function's instructions, how does it read it? It starts from the top of the function and then it goes to the bottom. Yep. In this case, our computer is just starting from the top and working its way to the bottom. Nice. And that applies here too. It goes from line one and it's like, oh cool, you're making a function called setup. But then it gets to line five and it's like, oh cool, you're defining a function called draw. And what that means is I need to call this function that you're defining, draw as bold eye, on line nine. So it jumps down to line nine and execute what it means to draw a bullseye. So let us make sure that we write this down in our notes so that we don't forget. So this is gonna take a little bit. We want to always start with, oops, our keyword function. All right, don't forget your space. We want draw bullseye. We have our parentheses and a curly brace. Now we have some comments in there. Right? We want to remind ourselves what a little ellipse does. And it has four things it needs. An X, a Y, a width, and a height. And then just for readability, we skip a line and then write another one to actually remind us what all of the instructions below do, in which case we're actually drawing the circles we need for the bullseye. Nice. So we have three ellipse calls, ellipse. I'm gonna write this down before I look at the numbers. All right, let's remind ourselves that we have our centers at 100, 100 for each one of these. And then we started with our biggest circle and worked our way to the smallest. Because order matters. And that should be it. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. You've got the name, you've got function, you've got the curly braces, you have the parentheses, every instruction ends with a semicolon. That's everything that I remember. Nice. Do you have any questions for me? So when I'm looking at the functions here, I put the definition for draw bullseye underneath draw, but I call it inside draw. Does it not matter the order? that I put the function definitions in? Um, in this case, no. You can actually define your functions anywhere you'd like here, but I, for convention, like to keep the function definitions below function draw. Can I put, okay, so that makes sense. Uh, can I define draw bullseye inside draw? No, we wanna make sure that we keep them separate. Okay, so I have to put them all outside of each other. Great questions. Yes, you do. Okay. Any other questions? Will I be able to do other things other than calling functions inside these? Yes. In future lessons, we will definitely get to new things that you can put inside of your function definition. Okay. Does that mean that they're going to be an easier way to draw a bunch of ellipses? Yes. Okay. That'll be good. <laughs> Great questions. All right. That's it.